In this video, we'll learn about the ideal op amp. The reason we study operational amplifiers, op amps for short, at this very early stage, is that first of all, they're very versatile. As you'll see, we can do almost anything with op amps. And second, they're very closely approximated by an ideal model. The internal operation of an op amp is quite complicated. It consists of 20 or more transistors and one or more resistors and capacitors. So understanding it in detail is an advanced topic. So we're gonna treat the op amp as a black box and learn about its terminal characteristics. This will allow us to design a wide variety of practical circuits. An op amp is an amplifier with three main terminals. There's the two inputs, the inverting input, and the non-inverting input, on the left, shown here, and following the usual convention for amplifiers, the arrowheads pointing towards the output over here on the right. Now, in addition to these three main terminals, in order for the amplifier to operate, it also requires power supply connections. These are shown in the second symbol here. Terminals four and five provide positive and negative supply voltages respectively. Sometimes these terminals are omitted from the schematic just to simplify things, but they're always required. It should also be noted that in some op amps, a negative supply is not required, and the negative supply terminal can simply be connected to ground in those cases. Finally, schematics can also be simplified, as shown here on the right, by simply indicating the voltages to which the positive and negative supply terminals of the op amp are connected without showing the sources explicitly. The ideal model of an op amp is essentially that of a differential voltage amplifier with high gain. That is, it takes the difference between the input terminals, which we'll call VID, and amplifies it by a large gain, A. In fact, ideally, we would assume that the gain of the op amp approaches infinity. This seems strange at first, but we'll see how to analyze circuits in this way soon. A few other properties of the ideal op amp can be noted here. One is that you'll note that no output resistance is shown. The ideal op amp has zero output resistance. And you'll also note that no input resistance is shown. There's an open circuit at the input in the ideal model. This indicates that the ideal op amp has infinite input resistance. And this in turn tells us that the currents to the input terminals of the op amp are ideally zero. The op amp has two input terminals. And so the two voltages at its input have two degrees of freedom. One is captured by the difference between them differential input voltage that we've called VID. That's the component that the op-amp amplifies. The other degree of freedom is captured by the average between these two input voltages, which we call the common mode input voltage. VICM is simply equal to the average of the two input voltages. The ideal op-amp amplifies only the differential component of the input and completely ignores the common mode input. Let's summarize the characteristics of the ideal op amp. First, we've said that it has infinite input impedance. This in turn implies zero input current. Second, we've seen that it has zero output impedance. So the output acts as an ideal voltage source. Third, we saw that the output doesn't respond at all to the common mode input. We say it has therefore zero common mode gain. So it takes the input common mode signal and multiplies it by zero. Or equivalently, it completely rejects the input common mode. We therefore say it has infinite common mode rejection. Fourth, we said that the amplifier's open loop gain A is ideally infinite. 
And finally, although we haven't said this explicitly yet, the ideal op amp is assumed to have that infinite gain over an infinite bandwidth, that is, at all frequencies. Here's the model of an internal circuit of a particular op amp, and let's consider how closely it meets our ideal model. First, we see that the input terminals are open circuited and therefore have infinite input impedance. Second, we see that the output is an ideal voltage source with zero output resistance. Next, let's find the gain of the op amp by expressing the output voltage V3 as a function of the two input voltages, V2 and V1. We'll first find the voltage at the intermediate node, Vd. Vd is the sum of the two currents coming from the current sources passing through the resistor R. So those two currents are Gm times V2 minus Gm times V1. And those are both passing through the resistor R to form the voltage Vd. This can be combined to an expression like this. Finally, we see that the output voltage, V3, is equal to a gain mu times Vd. Substituting in our expression for Vd from above, we get the final gain expression, mu gmr times V2 minus V1. So first, we'll note that this gain, this output voltage is purely a function of the differential input voltage, ID. It doesn't depend on the common mode input, and therefore, like an ideal op amp, it has infinite common mode rejection. The gain, A, is given by the product of these two terms. So if, as in this exercise, GM equals 20 milliamps per volt, R is 5 kilo ohms, and mu is 50 volts per volt, we can take their product and we'll find that A is a gain of 5,000 volts per volt. So it's not infinite, but it's very large. We often express the gain of op amps in decibels, and this is easily shown to equal 74 dB. So this amplifier has a finite gain, but is otherwise an ideal op amp.